we were talking about the traditions and um, the the location of wisdom relative to traditions where in some traditions wisdom is presented as outside of and other than Like, like heaven. <laughs> they find the wisdom in heaven. You have to get up to heaven first. Well, it's a nice idea, but it's not necessarily true. Everything that we think about is part of our own, let's say, heaven hellness. Our own uh, confusion. Our own resistance to the truth. Our own, let's say, separation from the light. And so practice then is really about collapsing that light already. And that's what this means, collapsing the difference in the separation. The split, the split mind. Unification, <coughs> integration, say, compassion. <clears throat> and so all the traditions represent pieces of the puzzle of learning and burning. Each country with its own karma, each tradition with its own limits, each master with its own particular flavor. And each work with its own specific demands upon the individual relative to time, space, energy, and matter. What was in one moment doesn't apply in the next moment. What was in one region doesn't apply in the next region. What is in one person doesn't apply in the next person. From relative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a mysterious process by such standards understanding the uh, spiritual nature of things, which is very confusing. Yeah. There's nothing there to grab onto. <laughs> spiritual na nature means like, who knows? Yeah. Who, who knows this? Who can know it? So, yeah. As I was going to say earlier, uh, when we're talking about the yogi tradition, the Hindu tradition, mm -hmm. it's very simple. Yeah. Yeah, I'm the teacher. Teachers first. Yeah. The basis is teacher. It's not about guru worship. This is the point completely. You slip off the cliff that way. Yeah. It's about the quality of the intelligence of the being. Yeah. And out of that comes the universe of Dhamma. Yeah. Or not. Yeah. Comment now. Yeah. And it's very simple, very clear. Example first. How else can you do that? When you talk about music, you got to see the performer. Right? Yeah. yeah, you have to hear it being played. Yeah, and relate to it. Mm -hmm. Comment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the demonstration was of the first importance for me, <clears throat> and that was the reason I sat out a teacher. That's the reason I'm sitting here now. Still looking for the teaching, man. Me too. <laughs> Haven't found him yet. Yeah. Very elusive. Um, yeah. Because as it was revealed to me, and as I intuitively understood it, the teachings, the written teachings, um, when read, are somewhat self-limited. Um, it the reader interacting with a text. And it seems like whether that was the limitations of the text I was reading, or of myself, or of both, or of neither, that those have very much faded away in the, in the presence of the demonstration. 
of it. Well, we have that view, and then there's the view that the teachings and, and the demonstration are the same. See? And that depends on who's seeing and hearing what it is. And so in the traditions, especially in the yoga traditions, they, they stick very closely to the word because of their sense of the speaker speaking from true, see, in, let's say, relatively limiting language. But there's no real intelligence working if you're limited to language. See. So for intelligence to see the word, then they're not limited by language. They get it right away. See. They can see through the word to the heart of the speaker and know if it's true for them. And so there's a living word as well as written word is the same thing. See. What is lived is spoken and what is spoken is recorded. Yeah. Same thing. And then it depends on the person who's receiving it to what degree there's any dis existing distortion going on in this circuitry or pollution, and to make that less than what it is, mm -hmm. involve a problem or confusing to the individual, or clear, and say, no, this is it, enlightenment is spoken in such words. So, yeah. Not that that's the truth, but you can know it if you hear it properly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on. And then we're talking about experience. Um, the idea of the, the words spoken are as a code given to the mind to release it from its prison. Yeah. Mm. Of belief systems, mm. opinions, mm. facts, so, knowledge, and so on. Materialism. and make the mind itself, at the soul level of awareness, see clearly and hear clearly and know clearly for itself. So then the word the written is confirming. It confirms what it is, that there is practice, that there is progression, and that there are many levels, many worlds, and um, mastery is possible. Putting all suffering down is possible. Awakening beyond the cosmic condition is possible. Understanding the presence of an enlightened being is possible. Knowing the sweetness and madness of knowing beyond knowing. So for some, the tradition make it possible for you to get on board see, as a beginner and start to pace yourself and be in the company of other practitioners and teachers, you know, lamas, uh, wise ones those who are living the, and walking the path, breathing the path, and singing the songs of the path. Yeah. Yeah. It's easy for anyone to see the path is something outside of you. And a lot of people feel, oh, that's what it is. You know, it's outside. It's, it's your religion. It's your institution. See? It's your osophy. <laughs> it's your system. When in fact, that's the least of it. Mm. 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 
the real comes from within. And that's a mysterious phrase because that's not very clear to many. It's symbolic. It comes from within. Powerful language. What does comes from within mean? Within what? Where? For who? And why? So it does come from within with all of those issues. Because it doesn't come from within. So they say it comes from within. And they say it comes from within because they know it absolutely doesn't come from without. <laughs> so they say it comes from within because it doesn't come from within. <laughs> so one of the theories that are functional in terms of the arresting of neurosis, so stop. Just stop. Can anyone just stop? No self. No thought. No mind, no world, no reality. <laughs> What's left? <laughs> no you, no anything, no it. Then just stop. That's practice. That's already meditation. It's already no one watching no one. Nothing looking at nothing. Who cares? So what? So just stop. Remember to just stop, yeah. look beyond, and listen beyond. Mm. Look beyond seeing, and listen beyond hearing. Mm. Mm. And whatever God could be, might appear to you, mm. whatever that could be. When you give up being anything else, might just show up. Don't believe. Do it. Stop and be.